Welcome to Amsterdam. Today we are going to talk about uh, humanity and AI. And in the studio here in Amsterdam, we have uh, Neil and Prayanka. And um, first, I would like to um, hear a little bit about you. Hi, I'm Nell Watson. I am a machine intelligence engineer that grew up in Northern Ireland. I, uh, I developed some quite interesting machine vision technology a few years ago for body measurement. Since then, I've I've segued into the realm of machine ethics, so uh, creating rules for naughty machines, and uh, also beginning to teach them about uh, our culture and about our values as well. Hi, I am Priyanka Regadia. I am a developer advocate at Google currently. I um, come from. I was born in India, so I come from um, a background of um, large amount of cultures. Um, growing up, I've seen a um, large amount of languages being spoken across um, um, and around me. And then um, from then, I, um, I did my engineering there, moved to U.S. to do my master's um, in computer science. And uh, the first job that I got was in the space of conversation AI. Uh, at the time, I did not know that this is conversation AI. The term has evolved over time. But the job was at an IVR company, Interactive Voice Response, as we know it, um, falls under conversation AI. So that's the beginning of me getting introduced to it and, um, and me working through it. And now at Google, I, I play a lot with conversation AI products. We have a few interesting questions coming up here. So uh, are you ready for the first one? Sure. Okay. So the, the standard question, the opening question is, um, what is AI? So in your personal opinion. In my view, I think, I think AI originally was about trying to replicate something as if a biological organism would do it. That was generally hand-coded. In more recent years, we've moved towards something that's a bit more like management by objectives. So you kind of illustrate to the machine what you're trying to do and enable it to figure out how to get there for you. That's why it's a little bit like having a genie in your pocket. I agree with what um, Nell has uh, defined um, AI as, um, and I feel like, um, to me, AI has always been, and this is just an addition to what Nell was saying, right? To me, it has always been this tool or its machine that can do things that I would not maybe want to do, which is like a repetitive task that I would rather have a machine do and me doing something more smarter in that time. That's how I consider AI to be. Tech companies, they kind of introduce AI to people without even them asking for it. It comes into companies and it's pretended to, uh, presented to people. Um, but how should we actually, if we should do this in a correct way, how should we introduce it to humanity and to people? We're seeing a lot of developments recently into areas such as meta-learning, where we uh, instead of trying to get a machine to do one task very well, we, we train it to be a novice at a lot of different things. And this makes it closer to a more uh, generalizable form of, of intelligence. Not quite there yet, but it's in that direction. Machines are getting more sophisticated, but human beings are still very complex creatures. Our culture is very difficult to understand. And of course, different people from different parts of the world often think and act in very different ways. I'm working with a, an NGO called EthicsNet to try to create a data set of examples of different behaviors in different cultures, which are generally pro-social. So kind of how to be a nice person wherever you, you know, whatever culture or situation you happen to be in. And I'm hoping that this is one good way of introducing humanity to AI. So from a tech perspective, the interactions that I have with companies and users and um, people who are going to be consuming AI, um, when I talk to them and or when I introduce them rather to AI, uh, my um, way of introduction has always been um, to understand and help them understand that there is this thing, technology or piece of machine that can help solve a problem that you have. And um, in most cases, they can understand that they're, or identify that this is a problem that I have. And yes, you identified it right. And yes, I need a solution for it, but I never realized. 
most of the good things that we have seen coming out of technology are the ones that are um, uh, that were never known that I needed it. But once I once I used it, I realized, oh wow, this is something that I was missing, and I should be using it. So that's how I I have been uh, introducing. Um, AI in general to people, and I found that to be um, to be really a good way for them to understand what this is. Um, and mostly, if you don't even talk about AI and just say this is a tool that helps solve an X problem, um, that goes a long way than just introducing it to be an AI and ML type application. So that was the kind of the the good way to introduce AI to people. If we talk about um, if there are any morality issues with AI and, and how you see it introduced in the world today and, and what you could fear for the future? Would you have any, any comment on that? I think this is one of the greatest questions of our age, and it's going to be a challenge, one that many people from all around the world are going to have to coordinate on and, and work with very closely to, to try to solve. I think that as, as human beings, we don't tend to learn morality from uh, from morality lessons in school. Like we don't sit down and you know get taught like don't steal things. We tend to learn morality more from things as simple as Saturday morning cartoons, right? Or you have the goodies and the baddies, and you know you kind of infer the virtue or the or the uh, or the villainhood of of one action or group versus another. And I think that that. Examples like this are going to be very important for machines to, to begin to understand what, what virtue and good behavior and pro-social actions look like. In terms of the, um, the tech companies and the ones who are building um, the AI um, applications or platforms, um, I have seen that it's, it's up to the it's up to, like any other tech, right? It's up to the user to realize how they're going to use it and what they're going to do with it. What we can do as good human beings is to make sure that um, that we take some ground and standing on where our tech is going to be used. And there are companies who are doing that. I work for one where we have created AI principles and we, we stick by them. And every single use case that we try to solve with AI, we make sure that our principle, we stand by those principles and grounds. So um, that is just one example, but I, I feel like as we are getting into this age, the tech companies do, um, do have the responsibility to be um, to be um, those who set those precedents as to where AI should be used, um, and we should be uh, we should be good citizens in terms of making those those decisions. We have been doing uh, go to conferences for almost twenty five years now, and we have been following topics like AI so over a fairly long period of time, and. Uh, like three, four times a year, we, we do have like, where are we with AI now? Mm -hmm. And what I have seen the past one, two years is that it seems like it's speeding up. Like uh, the capabilities are, are increasingly um, speeding up. And uh, so we, ha we had a speaker from Unity Studios and we asked him this year and we said, um, should we fear AI? And, uh, and I want to ask you the same question. From my perspective, I think that the greatest fear from AI is not, um, is not terminators running in the streets or um, some utility maximizer turning us all into paper clips. I, I think, to me, the greatest fear of AI is that it may be used as, as a weapon, not in the sense of killing people, but in the sense of messing up people's minds whether that's creating content which is unbelievably believable, um, you know, counterfeit evidence, for example, fake news, if you will, uh, or whether it's, it's simply messing with people in simple ways that, that drive them mad because systems just aren't working in ways that, that, that they expect, but in a way that you can't really prove that somebody is messing with you. We also are living in a time of intense political polarization and often a fusion of things like payment processors with online systems and with AI. 
And I think this is quite a dangerous mix for the future. And we need to be very clear in creating strong international rules on how to use these technologies in a way which is fair and equitable to all. I, I totally agree with all of that. I, the only thing that I would add is the fact that um, with every technology, there's always going to be, um, we're always fearful when, the, when something happens for the first time and when, when, it's, when it's starting and beginning. And over time, we start to develop an understanding about how this is useful to us and how this is helpful to us and how this can make us better at what we do. Um, and, and when we pass that time, I think with AI, we are at the stage where it's, this is uh, still really nascent and beginning and we're learning um, how this is bad and how this is good. And, and we are going to build um, an understanding of um, how to use it better um, over time without having to, without, um, uh, without basically seeing uh, some of the some of or how to curtail some of the bad aspects of it, um, and uh, the NGO that you mentioned now definitely is one of those types of initiatives, right? And there and the other one that I mentioned was the AI principles that that for example Google has set out. Like we are going to only work with X type of things on AI use cases, right? Um, I think those are some of the starting points that we are seeing um, as, as, um, uh, as markers, I would say, in the development of AI um, and how we are pursuing it. So I definitely don't think there is, um, there is we should be fearful of it in, in the sense that what is going to happen with this technology? Is am I going to lose jobs, or um, or is it going to affect my jobs? Yes, it's going to, and you you will have to adapt, and you will have to learn some new skills um, in order to to stay relevant. But at the same time, um, the things that AI would help us do on the positive side is um, the point that I made around mono, mon monotonous things that we do, right? So there's, we're going to have to look at all those positives and start to learn about what the negative impacts are and how do we curtail them. That is what I would say. Um, and we shouldn't fear, but we should learn from it and move forward. One last question to also follow up on this. I mean, so we should debate and we should have open discussions on where to apply AI. And how soon in, in, in our life should we know about AI? And how, how soon in life should we, should we learn about it and start teaching AI what we want it to do for us? I think it's, it's never too early to begin. There are some fantastic tools out there, such as Scratch, and if, you know, different versions that are more oriented towards different age groups. I think these are fantastic ways of learning the basics of programming. Know, simple things like if-else statements. From this, you can build up knowledge that will take you into other areas and eventually into tools like Python, which can be readily applied to a number of different data and machine learning uh, capabilities. Also, you know, making games and things like that. I think that, I think that there's a wonderful role for children as well in teaching machines about the world because Often we, we know that we understand something when we're able to explain it to somebody else. And I think it's nice when a child will have an opportunity to maybe explain the world as it sees it to machines. And that can be a wonderful symbiosis, I think. Yeah. The thing that I would add here is really just along the game side of things when um, kids and students um, at a very early age these days are playing with with things that or games that are designed with AI. So I'll give an example here. Quick Draw is a tool that um, that we've built within Google, um, and it's available for kids to play with. And it's really all you're doing is you're making strokes, and with machine learning, this game identifies whether um, this was a cat or a dog or a ball or a bat or a bed, right? So um, it's and and any age person could could play this game, but um, this goes to show that uh, you 
the kids are already using it and they're already enjoying it and they're trying to learn from it. So introducing this at an early age as to what this means and what it is and have them comprehend it for themselves, like Nell said, um, and then um, and then see um, and have them see the effects of it firsthand um, and give them an opportunity to decide whether they want to expand their understanding and learning in it. And then at that point, they can um, make games. They can start to build some of these things themselves and learn to code through Python and, and things like that. So that's that's the way I see it started from wherever you are, you're already using AI in some way, shape or form um, to start there. <laughs> Thank you so much on behalf of GoTo for coming and uh, thank you for your time in this interview. I think it was some brilliant answers. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. It's been a pleasure.